By the age of three, children may have up to a thousand spoken words and their speech can be understood even by unfamiliar adults. Yet saying some words continues to be a challenge. Hospitable. Ambient. Quiet thing to us. Being able to say words accurately in part relies on motor planning for speech. Motor planning for speech involves transforming how the sound patterns of the word are represented in the brain, the phonological form of a word, into a motor command for speech, how the lips and tongue and other articulators need to move in order to make the sounds. Motor planning also relies on sensory information, including feedback from the auditory system about whether sounds have been produced correctly. Researchers are still determining how and where speech motor planning occurs in the brain. When motor planning for speech breaks down, this affects an individual's ability to produce sounds, syllables, words or sentences precisely, consistently and with the correct rhythm. It's like playing a piece of music with notes that are missing or in the wrong order, or playing in the wrong key or with the wrong tempo. This motor speech planning impairment is known as apraxia of speech. Yeah. Yeah, what's that colour? Blue. Children with severe apraxia have speech difficulties throughout childhood and adolescence and this impacts on their performance at school, mental health and employment opportunities. Learning more about the biology of this severe disorder may help diagnosis and treatment to improve the lives of children with apraxia of speech. To better understand the brain networks underlying childhood apraxia of speech, we perform detailed brain imaging analysis on children from a large family with several members affected with the disorder. Magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, is a non-invasive method that uses a strong magnetic field and radio waves to create detailed images of the body. We studied seven affected children from the family who were 6 to 17 years of age and compared their brains to those of typically developing peers using quantitative MRI techniques. We looked at differences in the grey matter, which are the cell bodies of neurons and other brain cells, and white matter, the myelinated axons or nerve fibres. We also asked the children to perform a speaking task to examine which parts of the brain were activated during speech. We detected differences in the dorsal language stream in the affected children. On both sides of the brain, we found that white matter was reduced in the arcuate fasciculus and that grey matter was reduced in the left temporoparietal region. There was also reduced activation in the temporoparietal region on both the right and left sides of the brain when the children did the speaking task. We also found differences in other parts of the brain. The regions highlighted in orange formed the dorsal language stream. We hypothesised that the dorsal language network has not developed typically in our family with childhood apraxia of speech. We were excited by these findings as it is the first evidence showing how important the dorsal language stream is to speech disorder. In the future, we may find that disrupted development of the dorsal language network could explain other, more common and less severe forms of speech disorder. Please see our paper published in Brain for more information. Thank you for listening.